Ine Zalaya from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create this epic warfare trailer title, so check it out. Alright, so that looks very cool and we're going to recreate this in After Effects right now but if you don't wish to follow this tutorial or you want to support our YouTube channel you can always buy this template with the link in the description it's really easy to edit it also includes a tutorial on how to do that um, but for those that want to know how it's done let's start with the tutorial so I'll create a new composition make this full HD and rename it to main comp I'm going to make it uh, 30 FPS, 300 frames long, which means 10 seconds, and click OK. And then right here, I will go to Layer, New, Solid, and I will rename this to Background. Click OK, and then we're going to Effect, Generate, and we're going to pick the Gradient Ramp and change the Linear Ramp to a Radial Ramp. We're going to change up the color, so it's completely up to you. I'm going to use uh, some kind of the same colors that I used in uh, my preview, uh, right, like this here and of course you can pick with whatever color that you like and then I will drag this one down so we have the circle in the center and then I'm going to drag this one up until we have a nice fade then I will go to project manager and change my project settings to be 32 bits per channel uh, so we have a little bit more information and currently I see a lot of banding uh, to fix that I usually just go to effect uh, while my layer is selected effect noise and grain and add a little bit of noise and set this at 1% and that's going to fix my banding for me so uh, right here uh, we have our background and now we can add our text so go to the text tool and I will be using the Iron Man font uh, which I found on dafont.com I will go to my text tool click over here and just write warfare like so click on my selection tool go to the align tab right here and then I'm going to center my text out and just make it a little bit bigger center it again and I'm going to layer layer styles gradient overlay go into the gradient overlay right here open that up and go to edit gradient and now right here I want to pick some of the same kind of colors so we'll pick like an off like off white and go to the same kind of color palette that we use for the background and then right here I will pick a darker toned color like so uh, maybe something like this and click OK then I will go uh, to my text tool again and just duplicate it and then I will uh, change this here to be my outer uh, stroke here so I don't have a fill but I do have a stroke of one pixel maybe you can change that to uh, two, uh, yeah, two pixels and then we're going to open that up again go back to that layer style for the gradient and edit that gradient we're going to add a little bit more detail here so what we want to do is actually just um, yeah kind of contrast uh, the opposite color of this one so right here we can go a little bit brighter and that way we're going to see a lot more information in there so that's pretty cool let's keep it as it is right now and now we have a nice title uh, as you can see right here it looks pretty cool I'm going to close this down now and then I will just click on my text and hold shift to select both of these go to layer pre-compose and move all the attributes in a new composition and rename this to title we'll click OK and now what I can do is press P on the keyboard go to the uh, stopwatch right here and click on the stopwatch for my position on the Z position uh, which you currently don't see because we don't have a 3D layer we'll have to select 3D layer if you don't see that just toggle the switches make it 3D and for the position in Z we're going to just drag it in Z space we can hold shift to do it faster until it passes the camera like so move like 10 frames in time I'm doing this holding shift and pressing the page down key and then I press the page down a little bit more so we have a little bit more than uh, just these 10 frames and then I will click on my Z position and set this back at zero so now we have this slamming in uh, effect as you can see right here looks pretty cool 
I'm going to also uh, enable the motion blur for my layer and if I do this for the composition now you will see the actual motion here and it's going to feel a lot more realistic and now we have something like this. Of course you can speed it up and just dragging in this keyframe it can be a little bit faster than 10 frames actually. So now we have something like this, looks great. What I want to do now is right click new and add a new adjustment layer and I'm going to rename this to shake and then go to effects and presets and I did, um, well I actually did a video on this but you can download this for free on our website, it's called the wiggle preset. I'm going to be using this one, I will drag this onto my adjustment layer and then right before it actually slams in, I will click on the stopwatch for frequency and amplitude, move one frame and for the frequency I'm going to set this at like 15 and for the amplitude also 15, move 10 frames forward and just set this back to zero press U on the keyboard to reveal these keyframes right here and select the last two. Then right click on the last two, go to keyframe assistance, easy ease and now they're going to fade out nicely. Let's preview and now we have something like this. We can actually bring these in a little bit more and let's see what we have here. So offset them a little bit until you're satisfied. I think this looks pretty cool. Um, I'm going back to my settings here and instead of uh, 15 I'm going to set this to 20 and this one to something like 10 and uh, let's see. So this is completely up to you, just uh, pick something that you like, maybe we can increase this maybe to 35 and each time you do something it's going to give you different results so play around with these settings until you have a nice shake to your text and then we can uh, continue with the background a little bit more let's click on the background go to layer pre-compose and pre-compose this as a background so move all the attributes into a new composition background comp and click ok then we're going to open that composition right click new and add a new solid layer and I'm going to rename this to smoke and then I will click ok Go to effects and noise and grain and we're going to apply the fractal noise effect like usual and then we're going to the fractal type dynamic progressive. I'm going to increase my transform here so open up that transform the scale. I'm going to set this at 500 so we have a nice large smoke like so and then I'm going to hold alt and click on the stopwatch for the evolution. Right time times 1 20 and this is just a little expression that just animates the evolution over time so you're going to see some animation right here in our fractal noise. We can do the same thing actually for our offset turbulence but alt click and click on the stopwatch for the offset turbulence um, but now we're going to need a little bit more advanced kind of expression well it's actually rather simple but for some people it might uh, be so we're going to uh, create two brackets in between these brackets I'm going to create a well a right value open bracket and write zero close bracket and then just uh, plus actually uh, write plus time times also 100 comma open or before we open the bracket again value open the bracket write one close the bracket and there we go so that's it we have to do um, so what is this actually doing is it's looking at the value of x so this is the first position and then I'm going to um, add time times 100. So now it's going to look at the X and it's going to add a time expression comma value 1 is for the Y and it's just going to take whatever value we put into it so if we're going to animate that it's just going to stay at that value that's all it's doing uh, so we just wanted to actually offset the X and now it's actually moving to the right as you can see so now we have some smoke flying to the right go to the complexity set this at like 4 and then click on your uh, smoke right now and then just uh, toggle the switches, go to mode and set this at multiply and right here you can invert it if you want to let's see I'm not going to invert it press T on the keyboard and just set this at like 25 so now we have a nice uh, smoke in the background we can duplicate that same layer and now we can play with the transform scale right here so maybe set this at 150 and that way you're going to add more detail into your shot of course press T on the keyboard play a little bit with your opacity to get some different values you can also go and press double tap E on the keyboard and that's going to open up your expressions right here and maybe um, make the smaller parts go a little bit faster so right here uh, 
120 and this 200 and then you're going to see a little bit more of a 3D feel. Uh, just play around with these settings and you can get some really cool results. Okay, go back to the main comp. Now we have our background like so. And now all we need is some kind of particles to uh, just simulate that warfare tone. So we're going to create a new solid layer right here and rename this to particles or particle because I was actually too lazy to add that extra S. Okay, so go to effects and now we're going to add simulation CC particle world. Go to the producer, actually before we do that, go to the grid and guides and here I'm going to uncheck grid like so and then I'm going to the particles and change the line to faded sphere. Hold control and while holding control I'm going to drag these values down so we have a, a softer, well, drag kind of value that we're doing so if you hold control it's just going slower we want small particles like so and ch change the birth rate maybe to one and the longevity to two and then click right here in the center or what you can do as well is go to the uh, position x and y and just offset it that way but i just like to uh, pick this and put it like right here go to the physics tab now and right here i want to change my gravity so i actually want to drag it down until we have a soft animation towards the top so something like this value will do fine and now we have it flying up. Instead of using explosive I want to use a thrill that's going to kind of rotate my particles like so uh, like a real fire looks great and then of course we can change the colors a little bit so maybe a little bit more orange right here for the particles itself something like so. Okay looks pretty cool and what I want to do as well is go to the physics again and maybe the direction axis right here a gravity vector, vector actually and add a little bit more for the X and maybe well actually the rest is okay now it's going to fly a little bit more to the right I think uh, looks great um, and I'm going to just add some motion blur for that as well. So now we have that motion blur as you can see right now it looks also pretty cool. And I think that there is a little bit too much information right here. There are too many particles. So I want this to drag down. So we only have these far away particles like so. And then you can play around with the birth rate if you want more of them. But I actually like the few amount of particles that we're seeing right here. Of course in the beginning of your shot you don't have any particles so just drag this layer over until you do and then just enlarge it like so. And now we can duplicate that layer but before we do toggle the switches and change the mode to a screen so we have um, these bright particles and then just go to control press D on the keyboard and then go to uh, your particles and change these colors to a darker color. So these are going to be our darker kind of ash um, kind of yeah, particles. So change that to multiply, maybe also go to the particle and just uh, make it a little bit bigger. And of course, we're going to need to change everything up a little bit. So go to the producer um, and maybe make it a little bit wider like this. And maybe we want some, uh, let's see here. Well, actually, apart from that, it looks okay. Uh, we want maybe a little bit less gravity, so something like this. And now if we're going to play this back, uh, just increase the birth, uh, birth rate right here to 4. And let's see if we solo these. Are we actually seeing any particles right here? They're way too small, so I'm going to just make them larger like this. Okay. And solo this. And now we have these particles in the background, which are adding a little bit more variation. Lower the opacity if you want. And now we get a really cool warfare intro. Looks pretty cool, right? All right, yeah. So you can finish it off uh, with some new adjustment layers, like always, like usual. Uh, just make it a vignette. Go to the mask path and change it to an ellipse tool. Double click the ellipse tool. Go to effect color correction curves and drag down the curves. Then go to the mask right here and change the add to subtract and press F on the keyboard to feather it out. And now you have a nice contrast on the edges of your animation. And we have this here. Alright, so that's basically it. You can change the velocity because the particles are a little bit too fast, but that's completely up to you. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.